Hey, Jody here. In this video, I'm doing some TIG welding on stainless steel and I'm walking the cup. So this is another walking the cup video. I've got a couple of them already out there and I'm going to add this one to that playlist. And the reason is I think it's, it's a very marketable skill and it, it will help somebody pass a test, uh, get a better job, get a raise, help them feed their family. That's the name of the game. And I'll, I will also be using a large diameter gas lens kit that I put together. Now it's available on my store. This video is obviously free on YouTube, no pressure to buy the gas lens kit, but it's just there. It is what I would use for this kind of work. Let's do it. I have a few pieces of free machining 303 stainless, and that's what I'm going to be using today. It's not really recommended for welding, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. Now, there's lots of different size cups that would work on this root pass here, but at the very least, I have to get a large enough cup that it won't bump on the weld or bump on those tack welds. And a number six seemed to be all right, right and will also save me a little bit of gas because I can easily get by with probably 12 to 15 CFH with this number six cup. And I'll go to a bigger cup as I go and then increase the gas flow a little bit. I've got the electrode extended roughly the same diameter as the inside of the cup, which is roughly three eighths of an inch. I'm using a turntable today for the video just because it's so much easier to film with the arc staying on the top and the camera can just stay in one position. Same, same exact technique though, you know, same, you hold the torch the same and everything. You just have to figure out a few things if you're coming up from the bottom to the top. So we'll work on a video like that in the future, but this was a whole lot easier to film. Now let's pay attention to this. You can tell this is 303 stainless. 303 stainless has sulfur in it, which is great for machining, horrible for welding. And you can see the little sulfur pieces sort of precipitate out right at the top toe of the weld, right there. And that's kind of a telltale sign of when, you're, when you've got a piece of 303 stainless steel. It also tend to want to be grainy and undercut there if you take the arc all the way up there. But I'm not really washing the arc up to the wall. I'm just wiggling it and letting the, letting the filler metal flow. You don't have to do lay wire either with walking the cup. You can dip it in and out if you'd like to see the front of that puddle to make sure that you're uh, you know, flowing down into the root of the joint. Nothing at all wrong with dipping it in and out. But... It's a lot easier just to leave it in the puddle, and that's common practice for socket weld pipe joints. In fact, this is a whole lot like a socket weld pipe joint, a big heavy duty one. If you think of a, a two or three inch, 6,000 or 9,000 pound fitting that takes multiple passes, that's what this is gonna be like today. So I'm tapering off with a foot pedal here, but oftentimes a socket weld would be done with an air-cooled scratch start dry rig where you just snap out of the uh, snap out of the arc and sort of trail out then snap out and then hit it with a file on a brush and then carry on. I'm going to go up to a number eight size cup now and extend the electrode out just a little bit and put a pass in right over top of that that first root pass and that's going to look something like this. This is actually I guess you could argue this is wiggling the cup for these first few passes because you've got it resting against the side walls and you're really just rocking the torch back and forth and it's, it's, it's really a little bit easier than technically walking the cup out on a flat surface when you're kind of doing sort of like figure eight so it's, it's a lot like walking a, a drum across a shop floor. We'll get to that. Tapering off there, that's one pass over top of the of the first pass and I'm going to do a one wide pass over top of that now and you can see in order to do that this cup is kind of bumping on the on the wall there with the large diameter part of the cup and it hits the jaw a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and go up to the large diameter gas lens setup and I'll go all the way up to a number 12 size cup and that's as big as I'm going to go today. I'll show you the kit in just a second briefly but this is the way that goes on there. Not hard at all to swap out and that number 12 is going to let me extend the electrode out a good 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch no problem and I'll just weave a, a nice wide one in over top of that and then I'll start stacking them in there and that's where I'll have to start actually walking it. Well this is the kit I was talking about. It's for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. I figure if you've got one of those torches you've already got the end back caps and you probably already got tungsten so I didn't add that to the kit to add cost to it. It's got four cups, a 6, 8, 10, and 12. This large diameter white insulator, very necessary part to make everything work. A 332 and a 18 large diameter gas lens collet body. These are all CK Worldwide parts. There's no generic things in here. Uh, brass 
wedge collets here. That's an upgrade from the split collets. They last a really long time. It's really hard to screw them up. Comes in a nice little case. It's good for pipe, sanitary tubing, and all kinds of other stuff. I'll put a link at the end of the video. It'll take you right to the page where you can learn more. So again, I'm just putting one wider pass in there, and then I'm going to start stacking them in there. So now I'll stack two over top of this one. And one way of walking the cup, if you, if you can slide it, is just to do this number. Just work it up and down like this. And of course, if you're on the bottom, you're going to be gripping the torch a little bit differently. But as I, as I put the uh, subsequent passes in here, I'm going to have to sort of do like a figure eight, as if I was rolling a 55-gallon uh, a drum across a shop floor. And uh, I, I, I'll have an example of that later on a flat piece from a previous video. It's it's it's, uh, it's much easier to it's much easier to feel than to actually explain. Okay, that's one pass stacked in there. Let's put a second one in there now. I'm at about 150 amps now, I think, and I think I w I started off at maybe 140 to 150 for the first pass, and uh, I think I topped out at 150 because this thing gets heat built up in it pretty quickly, and no need in going crazy. I've only got a 150 amp torch on here. It's air cooled. If I go much more than 150, it's going to get really warm in my hand. Well, after those two were in there, now I'm going to stack three in there. The first one's just overlapping a little bit. You can you can see the puddle looks a little hotter here, and that's mainly just because I didn't let it cool a lot. Didn't add amperage just makes a difference on letting it cool and that's something that you got to do on a multi-pass stainless weld like this you got to have a little bit of patience and let it cool in between passes walk off get a drink of water you can use a little shop air on it to kind of speed it up a little bit doesn't hurt stainless at all to do that here you can kind of see that I'm walking it as if I was walking a drum across the floor back and forth that's what progresses the arc along now I'm kind of trying to keep the rod toward the top edge of the puddle. Uh, as long as I'm close, you know, I don't want to have the rod in the bottom of the puddle. It's going to tend to make it sag a little bit. But that tends to help if you keep the filler rod up toward the top of the puddle on, on something that's horizontal, sort of like this, where it would kind of want to droop if it got a little hot. So far, so good. I decided to go ahead and let it cool a little bit and while I was doing it put a little wire brush on there. You always want to use a stainless brush, a clean stainless wire brush, one that hasn't been used on carbon steel. Well this is the last pass and that's the finished weld. Now walking the cup really shines on something round like this but you can do it on flat things and if you just want to get some practice you can do it on a T-joint like this. The only problem is you might have to start inboard about a half inch because there's no place to walk the cup for the first half inch or so. You could freehand the first half inch to an inch and then walk the rest of it. But this is just a piece of quarter inch cold rolled and I ran a root pass in there just like I did on the round piece and then coming across with a second pass. You can see the electrode extension is roughly the same as the inside diameter of the cup. There's some leeway there. You can go a little bit further. You can run it back in there. Just a lot of that is personal preference. You'll figure it out as you go if you practice and try different electrode extensions. This is a little exercise in walking the cup right here. If you want to get a little practice on it, just see what it's all about. That's pretty much the same thing. There's the number 12 cup again. And I'm going to show some previous clips here of another video where I, I put a round piece in here and I have some, some marks, some hash marks scored like they were the edges of a, a pipe bevel or anything. I just didn't happen to have any stainless pipe at the time. I do now, and I'll be doing some videos on that pretty soon. But you can see, uh, walking it, sort of a figure eight. If you've ever walked a, a metal drum across a shop floor, it's really the same thing, except now you're holding on to a torch hang handle instead of the top of the drum. But it's the same concept, though. Sometimes you'll have to hold a torch upside down like this or sideways. So it's good to practice doing all kinds of ways, but once you practice a little bit and you understand it, 
and you understand that you can't just wiggle it and, and it's not going to go anywhere if you just wiggle it back and forth you've got to actually you got to actually walk it like you were walking a drum i know i've said it a hundred times already but that's that's really what it is and if you understand that you'll you'll progress along fairly evenly and the more you practice the more the more steadily and evenly you'll progress along and the more uniform your weave pattern will be and that's what you want now there are times when stuff is in the way and you can't walk the cup and on this particular one like on out on the end like that I didn't really have anywhere to prop I got a TIG finger on just a you know, shameless plug uh, but it really does show that you can prop right next to a weld like this and you can make a weave almost as good as walking the cup without learning how to walk the cup or sometimes again there's just another pipe in the way you don't have the freedom of movement you just can't walk the cup you have to freehand and when when that is the case it is sure is good to have the prop in your pocket because I've I hung in there here for a good minute or so right on that right on that hot stainless and I'm, I'm not even in a hurry to pull the gas off of there fingers not even warm and they look very similar so I've got the TIG finger and the XL both 100% sourced and made in the USA by friends and family and there are knockoffs out there and that's a shame but this is the original so right here there's a link to the last walking the cup video that I did and over here a link to the store where you can check out this gas lens kit and if you like what you see here hit that subscribe button I'll see you next time